Yo, what's up, YouTube? It's your boy Villar coming at you today with an album review. Today we talking about a most exquisite album, a legendary album that is essential listening. If you're a rap fan, if you're a hip hop fan, if you're just maybe want to get into Eminem, this is a great place to start. This is his second album titled The Slim Shady LP. Um, coming in hot three years later off of his previous album, Infinite, which bombed despite being a good album. And um, yeah, so the way he, this album basically catapulted him into the international, national and then international spotlight was through the help of Dr. Dre. See, it's a pretty wild story how our boy Eminem got discovered uh, in 97. So he's from Detroit, right? But he traveled all the way to the uh, Los Angeles for the Rap Olympics. And yeah, he placed second. Um, according to him, he should have placed first, but you know, that happened. And he, everywhere he was going, um, he had an album out or a demo tape out called the Slim Shady EP. And yeah, I'm sure he was he was passing it out everywhere he was going. You know, the whole point of him even going to Los Angeles was to become known, get his name out there. So he gave it to some people at Interscope. Um, they wound up giving it to Jimmy Iovine, the co-founder of Interscope. Um, and apparently as it goes, according to Eminem, in his interview with Joe Claire, he um, he just laid it on his damn garage floor, uh, this Ivan guy. Uh, Dre was over there. He picked it up, popped it in, listened to it. He was like, yeah, this shit is dope, man. I gotta find this guy because this shit is wild. This shit is hot. This fucking lyricism, this is crazy. Like, he's seen the potential in you know? So... Yeah, uh, at that point, a fucking manhunt ensued, and three days later, he was found, he was still in LA, and yeah, they got to work pretty quick. They made their first track together, titled My Name Is, which is the first track on this album. Uh, well, the first non-skit track on this album. Uh, so this album has five skits, Six if you count the PSA, which is the first track, which is hilarious. Um, yeah. And you know, one thing I love about this album, even the skits are, are, are just killer. Like this whole album is all killer, no filler. Even the skits is fucking crazy. This album has some of my favorite skits on any album I've ever heard. Um, yeah, like there's no skips here. So, I'm gonna talk about this album in a broader sense. Uh, what to expect as a whole, um, because it's really a coherent album. It's definitely on point, it's on theme. Um, and yeah, even, even like the non Slim Shady tracks, they, they fit in. And there, there are a couple serious tracks here. But they all belong and they're all cohesive and it's all it all sounds like the same project and it's all it all makes sense. The way this album even sounds, man, it is crazy. It's like it sounds like a cold winter in Detroit. Like a bleak winter, like some bad shit's about to happen. You know, it's it's kind of sinister, grimy. It's got that type of sound. But you know, it's also got kind of an eccentric, upbeat, cartoony sound too at the same time. Um, with the lyricism too, like the topics, it'll have you feel in all types of ways. Almost like an emotional roller coaster type shit. Like expect to be dying laughing at some points. Um, expect to uh, hear some shit that'll make you think. Expect to hear some shit that will make you just be like, God damn, this guy is spitting like that? What? Yeah, you can expect uh, P 
pure entertainment too because this is just ridiculous it's so creative it's so outlandish uh with the underground influence you can hear that too in m you know the underground has more of this grimy ass type of rap um slim shady is a grimy ass motherfucker you know as you'll find out uh he doesn't give a fuck he's unpredictable who knows what the hell he'll do next who knows what he's on where he is what he's doing who knows if if he just lost a leg you know it's just like this is like damn so this shit will keep you on the edge of your seat um and it's gonna be it, it's an experience it, all right so coming straight off of the psa in track one we uh go straight into uh slim's introduction to the world you know he's, he's trying to he's trying to let everybody know his name in my name is um, as he casually tells us what he's all about, what he'd be doing, you know, these crazy, uh, these crazy scenarios. He talks about slitting his dad's throat, talks about his mom doing all types of dope. You know, uh, it's a, it's a drug lace track, which will be a theme throughout uh, this whole thing. And yeah, the beat relies heavily on a sample from, uh, Lobby Sifra. He has a song called I Got The. And Dre uh, used it heavily for this beat. Now, uh, as good as this song is, there's actually at least 10 other songs on this album that I like more than this one, even though I like this one. Um, the flows are on point, the bars are on point. It's, it's interesting. Um, <laughs> it's funny, it's crazy. And yeah, you'll definitely be thinking what the fuck is this guy about to say next um i like the hook it's catchy um the beat is solid the only thing um i would like is um if the beat wasn't so empty you know if they added maybe one more element to the beat fill in that empty space maybe i would like the song a lot more but um for what it's trying to do just uh, come off crazy as hell while being calm and uh, being a, like a laid back track. For that, it does it. It does it, man. Hell of a track. All right, now coming straight off of My Name Is, we got Guilty Conscience. Um, if you've heard this song before, you know this is a hell of a track. Um, it's actually amazing. The way they pulled this off, this, the, just the concept of the song and how well they were able to do it was insane um the song goes into detail about three scenarios where you know uh slim is playing the devil on the shoulder uh dre is trying to be the voice of reason telling people think about what the fuck you do before you do it and em is like man just do this shit man fuck it fuck this shit and um yeah so the first scenario they uh go into this dude is about to rob a liquor store. He's like, yo, fuck this bullshit. I'm about to just, I'm about to hit this lick. So uh, Dre and Eminem have a back and forth. But yeah, by the end of it, he decides to back away and not even do this shit. The next one, this dude is about to try to uh, like rape a fucking, a wasted youth, basically. And, uh, yeah, M is like, yo, fucker. Dre is like, yo, look at look how old she is. What are you doing? And um, I don't even know if, like, honestly, I don't even think it, it's really said what the fuck he ends up doing. But yeah, their verses going back and forth on that one are insane too. Um, one note, I feel like M probably wrote a lot of Dre's stuff in this song. I feel like what Dre is saying. That's M's flow, for sure. That's like what M would say type shit. And then the third scenario is this dude came back from work, caught this bitch cheating, you know? Like M said, while you at work, we, she, she, so, well, she's with some dude trying to get off. Fuck slit in her throat, cut this bitch's head off. And then, and then my favorite line in the song, 
Um, after Dre is like, nah, man, maybe there's a reasonable explanation for this. He's like, what, she tripped, fell, landed on his dick? That's the funniest shit ever, yo. And, uh, yeah, man, eventually, Dre is like, man, yo, fuck this shit, man, where's your gun at? Boom, 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 boom! This track right here, this is brain damage, okay? This is Slim Shady Origins. And yeah, it is loosely based on Eminem himself, Marshall Mathers himself, um, talking about a childhood bully he had, talking about how he was just a misfit. And um, yeah, of course it's exaggerated because this is a Slim Shady LP, but it's definitely, uh, he took inspiration from his, from his roots from growing up. That's for sure. And um, the storytelling here is insane, just like the previous track. In fact, I feel like M doesn't get enough credit when um, the conversation is brought up with the best storytellers in rap. People forget about songs like Brain Damage, for example, as just one example. And um, yeah, the beat fits. Like, I love how melancholy it is. Cause it's it's damn it like it, it it keeps you on edge. It's uneasy feeling, and it's a little bit sad. But it's upbeat enough too, and he's rapping fast enough too. To um to offset that. So yeah, this track this track is very well done. It's well written, and the hook is amazing. The hook is fucking amazing. It's a classic Eminem track. Like, the first time you hear this shit, you're gonna be blown away. Straight up. All right, y'all, and this is the next song after a little skit by Paul, Emma's manager, telling him to uh, try to tone it down if you can because this is getting kind of fucking crazy. What the hell is this? So, yeah, he actually does for track six. This is If I Had, and it's definitely a sadder song. It's slower. It's, um, it's bleak. It's got some wailing vocals in the background by Donna Ray, who I'm used to collaborate with frequently. Um, he's talking about his life, really. He's talking about what the fuck is fucked up in his life. Being broke, being, not having his a fucking place, um, not having a phone, you know, wearing the same shit all the time. The same damn Nike Air hat. He wore that for like five years, I believe. Um, yeah, it's probably his only hat he even fucking had. <laughs> but yeah, his life was no joke. It was, uh, it was, it was tough. It was definitely tough. Growing up in Detroit as a as a white MC and all this, blah blah blah. That's why he got snubbed. <laughs> it might be why he got snubbed. I mean, shit, probably. Cause uh, yeah. And he, he addresses that. He's like, yo, I can't I can't get no airplay, you know what I'm saying? Tired of JLB saying where hip hop lives. Tired of other rappers who ain't bringing half the skills be saying they wasn't feeling me on nobody's as ill as me. I mean, it's the real shit, you know? And his song, uh, the way it opens up, man, it's one of my favorite openings to a rap song, honestly. Life by Marshall Mathis. Because it's just so fucking real. If you relate, then you know. Yeah. And if you do too, then this will be a memorable track for you. It's a great song. And um, as zany and as electric as this album can be, this song still fits in great with it too. Just because the production is, uh, it, it still has that same Slim Shady LP sound, if you will. So it doesn't feel out of place at all, even though the, the it's a it's a big tempo switch. All right, so we got number seven, 97 Bonnie and Clyde. This is a legendary, another legendary classic track. So this is basically a song about Eminem taking his daughter with him, his uh, toddler or baby daughter, Haley, uh, to the lake with him to um, dump Kim's body in the lake, basically. And 
Yeah, it's it, it goes into detail about the ride there, why he's doing it, you know, and just talking about Kim, how crazy she can be. Haley's Haley sounds like she's confused and all that. They probably just brought her in the studio, like, yo, just just put her in there, man. Just 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 let her say what whatever she says. And uh, yeah, she's featured on the song. You know, she coming in with the ad libs and shit. You know, we got that grasshopper in the beat going crazy. <laughs> that shit is wild, man. It's atmospheric, it's eerie, it's slow paced, it's haunting. It keeps you on the edge of your damn seat. That's how Eminem was, was feeling. Like he said, instead of actually doing it, I'm just gonna make a song about doing it. <laughs> Cause uh, he was almost at that damn point where he wanted to do it, you know? He was like, he channeled that into this song because, yeah, Kim was a crazy bitch. You know, she was uh, definitely not the most, uh, the, the best mom, the best uh, baby mom either. You know, it was, uh, so yeah, it was, it was a crazy time with, uh, with Kim and Eminem. That's what inspired M to uh, make this track and yeah it wound up being a fantastic fucking track um, a great piece of art if you ask me um, it's amazing I'm always gonna love this song alright yo so straight off the bitch skit where this bitch is bitching about Slim we dive into my favorite track on the whole joint role model this this shit is just ridiculous. It's too insane. The bars are crazy. The beat is immortal. Um, the flow, the rhyme schemes, the references, um, just the concept of it too. Like on some Charles Barkley shit. No, I'm not a robot. The bass line, the, that, that drowning sample, which references the opening line. Or well, the, the water sample in the background, like it's all just, it's all just fire. The drums, I mean, everything, like it comes together very well. And um, yeah, it was produced by Dr. Drazy. This is the third track on the album produced by him. Um, he definitely did his fucking thing. It was actually Dr. Dre and Meltman who used to work with Dre in like the late 90s, early 2000s. But yeah, the bars on this shit, it's just Slim Shady at, at his most berserk. You know, he's fucking, he's, he's hopping in cartoons, he's disengaged, he's beating up Foghorn Leghorn with an acorn, you know, he was, he was, he's blaming it on his uh, premature birth, maybe, possibly, which Emma actually was born premature. <laughs> yeah, it's just zany, electric, fast paced, you don't know what the hell he's about to say next. It's just like, damn. It's like, it's just like a whirlwind. It's, it's kind of like MF Doom, just a whirlwind of, of bars. And at the end of it, you're like, I'm gonna have to <laughs> rewind that. I, 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 might, I didn't even catch all that, you know? But that shit was crazy though. So yeah, this is amazing track. Everything about it is great. The hook is great. The lyrics are great. The beat is great. I mean, it's just immortal. This is an immortal song on an immortal album. It's fucking ridiculous.